This conference will now be recorded. Okay, I'll call the Vice Long Pedestrian Committee meeting to order. Um, roll call, please, Bella. Tracy Kluke? Here. Zero Volk? Here. Jessica Atkinson? Here. Kim Shah? Here. And Sharon Help? Here. Um, pleasure with you. Second. Okay. I would like to add one change to that. I would like to table item 8E on the agenda um, and give staff a little more time to look into that and do some more work on it. Um, the document that you have is not been filled in at all, and I think staff needs a little more time than for us to react to that. So I would like to um, table 8A, the discussion on education um, portion of, is it, by family application. Um, uh, so, uh, it, does it make does it make any sense to at least see what it, it covers to find out what the committee would like us to get more information on? What do you think, you guys? You guys have a high chance to look at it. I mean, we've gone that route in the past with other sections of it, and I think it's difficult for the committee because they don't know a lot of the answers to those questions. So um, I think that's, you know, staff, if they could bring forth at least some information that then the committee could react to would be appreciated. Um, but, and then we got two new members that haven't really been involved in it all, so. Yeah, well, we can do that. Uh, I think with the education section, the only comment that I would have is um, I think we internally probably just need to meet with the school yeah. district as yeah. well um, in advance because a lot of these are school right. based questions like what, what's specifically in curriculum at the school. So we do the bike rodeo. Yeah. And yeah. what do the schools do? Maybe in PE classes, things like that. We don't necessarily know that. So that's kind of why uh, yeah. one of the main reasons why it was left blank was just to kind of. But the committee know that there's a lot of questions here that are specific to curriculum in the schools. Uh, but we can, you know, we can set that up with, with our district counterparts and see what they have for feedback on that, and then bring that back. I'll, I'll, I'll about, since, sorry, right. sorry. Um, you know, for the number of years we used to have, I mean, this is a perfect topic to have a school board, or the school board, school person come here. And give a presentation so you know rather than I mean then then they're telling it from the horse's mouth versus like through us it, you know maybe I mean this would be a good opportunity to try and get someone from the district yeah that I'm here like, for, for this item versus yep having right. the final information and do a lot of stuff when it can be told directly from them <laughs> what I'd like to do is meet with the district so that they can go through the application as well and have adequate time with it and then you know, Dirk, Dirk had mentioned that you know, he'd be more than welcome to attend as a liaison if it's specific to the conversation or topic of discussion specific to the district. Uh, so this would be a good opportunity for Dirk to come back and kind of present what we find. And then it would be very specific to Dirk is one of the associate principals, I think, at the high school. He's a principal. Um, he was um, on our committee as a liaison the district but because some of the topics of conversation don't necessarily pertain to the district and some of his other scheduling conflicts he was having a hard time getting to the meetings so we just mentioned that it would be fine for him to attend when it's specific to the district i so, think having him have to be yeah. because i know like elementary school and stuff like that he probably doesn't have as much right. yeah, he'd need to get and say that's where i could see a lot more of this obviously hopefully being but I agree. I think just having the district representation there can can reach out. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have. I, I, I don't want to say that we don't have a good working relationship with West of Pier schools, but we just don't have the same type of relationship with West of Pier schools. So it'd be good to kind of you know, approach them as well. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you could find that Ash Robinon's doing one thing and most appears doing another, and just kind of having that perspective mm -hmm. of what they're doing. It gives us an excuse to build a better communication arrangement with the district. I think years ago when Brad Taylor was out here, he was very hard on that. And we the fewer for the Green Bay School District, they had a lot of grants, they did a lot of like pet stuff, and Brad was, you know, he was a great liaison to this yeah, committee. Now I don't know if they have someone that's really filling that hole as much, but um, it'd be great if you guys reach out and see what you can come up with, and then when you're ready, mm -hmm. bring it back, and then we can respond to it. So, um, so that would be my addition is to table AB if the second in the original motion would accept that. We made a motion for that. I did. So would you accept that? Amend the motion. Yes. yes. Chair, did you second? I did. I did. Oh, okay. Okay. They were actually <laughs> Well, he, you know, he's I know. Got his okay, he's not here, hardly ever here. I know. <laughs> One meeting. <laughs> okay, moving in a second. Any other discussion? Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, item five is action on the minutes. Um, June, June. Well, sorry, my time is on here. Any questions, changes, or additions to the minutes? Is that what we have a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion by Leroy. I'll second. Second by Kim. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Um, and six is comments from the public. Uh, must be limited to items not on the agenda, must state name and address, limited to five minutes, board's role is to listen and not discuss the item, personal issues cannot be discussed nor in the individual's name, and board is not able to take action at this meeting. Is there anybody online? It does not look like it. Any, no one in here? <laughs> staff. Um, so I believe we do not have any comments from the public unless there's any committee members that want to. Item seven reports and updates. Um, we'll start with Eshwalan on public safety. All right. Good afternoon. Um, so some uh, updates. Uh, just give you an overall update on staff and where we're at in the uh, We've got two officers in field training right now. One in the academy. Uh, we're doing backgrounds on two additional officers. They are all successful. We should be at full staff um, hopefully by August. Uh, obviously, with people in training. Um, things go well. Our staffing level should permit us to hopefully this fall uh, be able to post that, post and fill that dedicated traffic enforcement officer spot. Uh, granted, some of that's going to hinge on people passing training and also uh, if we have any staff on flight duty during that time. But people are passing paramedic, people are doing well in field training, so far doing well in the academy. It'd be overly optimistic, but things are looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. Uh, we did do a Frogger deployment on June 22nd uh, this year. Uh, we had two officers and a community service officer at our Frog. Um, excuse me. Uh, the first uh, location from 3 to 5 p.m. was on Pilgrim between uh, Oneida and Holmgren, the uh, crosswalk there. Uh, that location. We have about 20 to 30 that uh, complied. We had two uh, two warnings and one citation of two hours of enforcement at that particular location. Uh, the second spot we did that day was from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. That was on the home ground at Marvell. Uh, that one resulted in two citations and two warnings. We had about 20 to 30 that uh, complied with the um, pedestrian uh, laws at that location as well. So. Fairly decent uh, deployment. Um, there'll be an additional date later this uh, summer. I believe there's another one later this year as well. Um, but the first one went off pretty good. Um, as far as traffic enforcement in general, um, traffic citations this year are up. Unfortunately, uh, traffic crashes are up as well compared to last year. Uh, it seems like it may have been a bit delayed, but we seem to be rebounding from the dip we had from COVID a few years ago, and it's, it's coming back, both uh, call volume and uh, also uh, traffic and crashes. Um, with more crashes, we've had more injury crashes this year. 
Uh, but a lot of those, or a lot of the increase with those, has been in the category of possible injury. Um, and that's really an opinion based on the officer, and that could be your uh, something that feels sore, but I'm not necessarily transported by the uh, ambulance. So we are going to dig a little bit deeper into that and see what uh, we can identify as far as potential causes of it. Uh, right off the bat, one thing that jumps off and is probably good for uh, about eight to ten crashes would be uh, the construction area on 172, um, especially around Babcock and Daggerland. Uh, had an increase there, and then we're also getting an increase along uh, Oneida. Um, especially around Anderson and uh, Willard. As far as uh, bike and ped goes, uh, we only had um, one new um, bike and ped collision. Uh, that was on June 22nd um, down on Packerland and Maine. Um, the vehicle eastbound on Maine with the green light struck a juvenile on a bike that was uh, northbound disregarding the light. Uh, so unfortunately on that one, the uh, juvenile biker was at fault. Uh, no injuries on that one, um, or at least no serious injuries on that one. And the uh, kid was warned as far as proper uh, adherence to the laws when you're on bike. Uh, well, covers what I have as far as traffic stuff. We do have a um, staff traffic safety meeting coming up tomorrow. Uh, does anyone have any topics they would like us to discuss tomorrow as a staff, uh, especially things regarding um, traffic signs, other traffic issues? A um, couple things that we have on the agenda for tomorrow are to uh, discuss the possibility of uh, no U-turn sign on uh, Oneida Street by Starbucks, um, and then um, talk about uh, lighting on the Holmgren Way in the Bar District. Other than that, really just updates on uh, pre-existing projects is what's on the docket. Um, so, yeah, if anybody's got anything, uh, let me know. Uh, we can get on the agenda and our staff uh, along with public works can discuss it tomorrow and dig a little bit deeper into it. Question. Yes, sir. Can, now with the new highway, with, you know, 172 being new, mm -hmm. can I still ride my, can I still ride out there? Are you talking on a bicycle? Yeah. Uh, not on the freeway part. Part will be I, can go from, I can go from Packerland West. Correct, Packerland West would be fine. Uh, that section between uh, Babcock and Packerland, I don't believe that would be considered freeway. I don't think it's considered freeway until you're heading east of uh, Babcock. Right. And that's where um, Brown County uh, Sheriff picks up. They handle the freeways in Ashwa Avenue, so uh, that's really where the delineation is. I'd have to double check if there's um, signs posted there as you head onto it. Um, heading eastbound up to a uh, progressive state, you know, starting the freeway and certain vehicles prohibited. Yeah. But that's considered the freeway part for sure, east of Yapcock. Yeah. I mean, I've always ridden there, but I just wanted to make sure that I can, now with the new smooth road, <laughs> I, I want to make sure that I can ride there still, you know. <laughs> yep, uh, you should be fine as long as you're on the freeway part. Yeah, okay. Good question. Any other questions that I have for Brian? Um, I just want to jump back to Frogger. Did you get that one? Yeah. Um, for Frogger this year, Wello had hired an instructor to do a uh, two-hour training for how to implement the Frogger program, and they had officers from all over the area come and attend. Unfortunately, Ashwaban didn't have anybody that went to the training. And then the master trainer, who in all is actually my husband that they hired to do the training, because he teaches all of the nation for this particular training. Um, he went out to different sites just to see how things were going at the different sites. And um, Brian, if you would have time sometime, I'd just like to go through some of the concerns he had specifically with Ashwabanon and how it's handled. And probably part of it was the training end of it and maybe some other things and maybe your CSO that hadn't done it before, because I know that the gentleman at the CSO that did it before mm -hmm. had done it and there was a new CSO or something. Yeah, but he used a different CSO last year. So if you have time or something, I'll just give you a buzz and I can just okay. sit down or um, we could even talk to Peter if you wanted to and ask him some concerns because he was concerned about kind of the safety of the Frogger too. Um, wasn't in yellow. The, some of the sight distances weren't marked. So he was just concerned about some of the safety issues with it. So um, I'll give you a call. We can maybe sit down and talk about it or I can talk to him about it. Okay. We appreciate you doing it, and I know there's a couple more coming up, but we just want to make sure 
it's it's good and it's, it's safe for everybody and it's safe for the motors to move through as well. So. Yep, I think uh, we can um, probably address that best. Uh, when I post for the next Frogger, I'll have, uh, I'm not for sure which staff are going to be working it. Um, that was probably the issue as far as scheduling with uh, doing the training uh, availability. Sure. Yeah, that's what I figured. Uh, we got posted, but yeah. I think uh, if you guys are good for it, let's touch base. Uh, once I have the next one posted and the staff sign for that one, I'm going to make sure the staff that is actually working it is getting the uh, proper guidance on so that we're doing it well, yeah. uh, both safely, yeah. and then um, you know, also uh, yeah, making sure we're covering all our bases as best we can really work as well. Yeah, that would be great. And and just a reminder, is Frogger grant funded, or is that voluntarily? We operate under that, or uh, Frogger is not grant funded, so, uh, so we're, we're a participating uh, agency across basically the Green Bay area. Correct. That one's a Green Bay Metro one. Now, I did explore the possibility of doing a um, traffic safety grant specific to pedestrian enforcement. Okay. Um, however, once I got the grant paperwork for that, the requirements for that were a bit too um, a bit too much for our agency. Okay. Um, it would have probably required uh, forcing a lot of officers and then forcing them on top of uh, the existing uh, seatbelt grants that we have, which usually fill up pretty good, speed grants, which fill up pretty good, um, and then uh, OWI grants, which I'll force people in for the ones that we host the natural out on, but a lot of the out of jurisdiction ones uh, don't get filled up. So I would have I would have liked to if it would have been a little bit more uh, flexible on the requirements, I would have, but I had to turn them down because it would not have been our staff in light of the other workload that we have this summer. So as far as fraud or that one, we do have uh, on our own, but yeah, the other ones, uh, I can go into detail offline, but they have pretty significant requirements that they have for that one as far as work on. Yeah. I don't know if Peter was on site evaluating the locations. He was. Okay. Yeah, okay. he was both sites. And I was just thinking to avoid any conflicts of interest with your spot as a trustee, but then Peter's role involved with well on and the evaluation of it. That he or should be the one having that conversation. That's fine. Yeah. That would so that way we have to do that. Keep that separation. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. 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 Be happy to do that. No, I just want to ask a question. So, in a grant, what are you looking for funding for? For like salary time for the training or for? So, the way the um, DOT Bureau of Transportation Safety or BOSS grants go, um, they will pay for uh, overtime wages and benefits. And they require a 25% match from the local agency. Um, so when we do, say, speed enforcement, well, actually for speed enforcement grants, uh, drunk driving grants, and seatbelt grants, Green Bay PD is kind of the administrative umbrella agency, um, which is good for us to handle a lot of paperwork then. And we just route everything through them. Um, then at the end of the month, we'll follow a reimbursement request, listing off the, uh, the individual officers, and then seeking reimbursement for their actual uh, rate for hourly OT wages plus benefits for any deployment shift they work. Then we have to log 25% uh, uh, match for that. And that could be administrative stuff such as uh, myself doing paperwork or, or um, you know, if I go out on patrol for a couple hours, I can log that time as matching time for uh, traffic enforcement. Uh, and that's what the um, pedestrian one would have been as well. Uh, but the uh, patrol requirements for that one and uh, shifts that we would have had to fill in on uh, would have been pretty uh, pretty heavy. Uh, so it is kind of manpower intensive to do a pedestrian uh, enforcement deployment, uh, especially if you're doing a frogger type operation. Um, so unfortunately for that one, to balance our staff workload, I had to take a pass on it. But it, it's a good funding source. Uh, in years past, they would also have uh, kind of a drawing at the end of the grant cycle for certain traffic enforcement equipment, traffic safety equipment. But unfortunately, they've not done that for several years. But we'll still take the wages and benefits. That's a uh, good benefit. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, Brian or Brian? Anything else you would like to add? Uh, nothing else to add, but uh, like I said, if you have any um, things you'd like us to discuss, to, uh, discuss with staff, um, yeah, not just today, but anything that comes up, especially stuff like uh, traffic signs, uh, problem locations, um, you know, anything of that nature, let us know and we can discuss at our staff meetings. Sounds good. How often do you meet regularly or are you just as needed? Uh, we shoot for regular quarterly meetings. So our next one is actually uh, tomorrow afternoon. 
Um, yeah, the Brown County meeting is tomorrow morning, and then the uh, Asheville Avenue one is uh, tomorrow afternoon. Thanks, Brian. Uh, now we have the other Brian, uh, public works. All right. So um, obviously, you guys may have seen my public works written report. Um, with that, I can cover a few things, and I also have one thing additional that I'll cover that's not included in my written report. Um, little update uh, from the time that I had actually typed this report. Uh, the bike stencils that are out on a core mirror, uh, those have been repainted. I know it says in here that they will be completed in the next few weeks. Um, they are actually completed from the time that I typed that to now, so they are completed. <clears throat> More sad. Um, you'll actually see that that is open and open on Friday. Uh, there is still some challenges with the intersection signals uh, at Holmgren and Morris. One of the loop detectors is not operational. Um, so people will notice that they are coming down Morris going east. When they get to Holmgren, it takes forever to get a green light. So uh, that's something that we're working through. Other than that, there's minor punch list items that we'll work through uh, over the course of the next couple weeks here. Um, that will close the project out, uh, much like Element Way, just some minor punch list items to work on. Um, Village Hall uh, North parking lot, which is a public safety parking lot and the sidewalk project. Uh, the curb and gutter is installed. Uh, they also did get the binder with the asphalt down last week. Uh, mid part of this week, they'll be working on getting the restoration completed. Um, with that, hoping to follow that up with asphalt, final lift of asphalt next week. Following that, we will have the lighting completed and then also the gate work. Um, you may also notice on a concrete basis for the pedestrian push buttons have been poured at the intersection of Morris and San Luis. <clears throat> um, so that is completed. Brookwood and Lombardi, uh, we're currently working with Ayers Associates to get a uh, supplemental agreement for engineering services for the design of that project. On June 15th, we met with both WSDOT and the county uh, to see what there, what we would need from them, what work we can perform since it is the county right of way and the access is controlled by WSDOT. Uh, there's no major uh, concerns expressed, all things that we should be able to work through. Uh, they mainly just spoke about intersection locations, um, trying to hold those as fixed points. Alden Station Trail, uh, we do have the 60% plans for that. Uh, we, we have performed the review and we're meeting with Ayers, uh, not Ayers, McMahon on Thursday, no, Wednesday morning uh, to discuss those comments and hopefully we can get that out in a bit. Uh, with that, the one thing I'd like to add, out on Parkview Road, um, east of Ramada and west of Holmgren, there is a railroad crossing there that the CN Railroad will be redoing tomorrow, uh, so that portion of Parkview will be closed. Uh, there is a rail that's loose, it, essentially the ties that hold it in, or the railroad spikes that hold it into the ties came loose. Um, along with that, there's some other components that they just need to tighten up. So that'll be happening tomorrow. Is that just a one-day project? Or yeah, yeah we're oh, supposed okay. to get it all done in one day. Okay. Any questions for John and the other Brian? Thank you, Brian. Yep. Right. Um, what was your next? Uh, well, the current status is kind of uh, of that 12 meter trail bridge. It's kind of come to a grinding halt right now. Um, the whole about it is the railings and the company that is supposed to fabricate the railings, which the railings have to be in for about five other things to happen. Uh, including the crane to get out of there and all this other good stuff. Um, they haven't gotten the materials in yet for the railings, so everything is just pulled up on the railings. Um, the trail portion, though, uh, they are supposed to be paving that this week. Uh, it was supposed to be last week, and then it was moved to this week, so technically the, the latest I heard is supposed to be in there tomorrow. Uh, so get the paving machine in there. So that's a good start. Um, in terms of future uh, things um, because of the Alton Station, the, the Main Street Avenue Trail Extension engineering has been pushed back because the person who's going to be working on that is working on the Alton Station project. So when they're done with the Alton Station project, then he can start working on the extension of the Main Avenue Trail from Ridge to Arts, I believe, which is to the east, the little cul-de-sac. That's the next. Um, 
the village board did approve a couple of really good projects, if, if you're not aware. Um, so we're looking at uh, extending a little bit of a trail system in Argonne. Now it's not a big park, but we're going to put a crusher dust trail on the back side of the park and then uh, a boardwalk trail into the woods between the park and Cabela's. Um, and that trail should come out fairly close to Brookwood, I believe. Um, so that, that'll be nice. Um, so that, that approval was, was given to move forward on that. Um, also approval was given by our village board at the last village board meeting for the next extension of the Ashwaubee May River Trail. So that would be from where the trailhead is going to come out right now, the bridge trailhead at the Boys Baseball parking lot. Um, it'll go behind Ashwaubee May Lake um, to the southern fence line, uh, southern fence line, and somehow around the park over to the boat launch area. Um, so the approval was given for the engineering design uh, to continue working with Grafe on that next phase. So. That'll probably start to happen in, in uh, my guess is sometime in the fall once this phase is complete. Then they'll be switched over and start working on the next one. So, are you going to be doing a big ribbon cutting for the Ashwaubee River Bridge when it does get ready to go? And... I, I would I would like to, but <laughs> I, I thought we would have done it already because <laughs> it was supposed to be done by mid June. It's nowhere close to being done. Um, but I, I would like to do it officially. I think it's appropriate, especially with the $150,000 uh, donation we got from the, 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 the private yeah. foundation. Awesome. Um, I, I think that we should be doing something, but obviously there's got to be a number of pieces that are in place. I don't want to like do a ribbon cutting when it's not complete. Oh no, and I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying. Please yeah. invite this committee when you do yeah. that. Yeah, you know, and, and that actually includes the, all the station. I, I'd like, oh, yeah. it, depending upon how that gets spit out, the timing of the whole thing, I'd like to have the whole thing ready to go so people don't have to like be bumping around on gravel or anything yeah. on the other side of the bridge. Yeah. And, and, then, and then do it right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Just a couple of questions. Yes. Sorry to be so full of questions. Yeah, no, anyway, that's, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. Okay, first of all, what is getting. What all in, I live in all the stations, what all is getting paid? People will be thrilled to hear. So there's there's a couple things. So you, you've got where the bridge is. So yeah. eventually we have to build the landing that's going to go up to Broadway. Okay. So that, that will be paid. And then the gravel pathway along the water connecting to Bay Harbor condominiums, that will eventually be paid. But because there's some... There was some elevation discrepancies that were found, um, and so they're they're kind of redoing some of those discrepancies and getting permits from the DNR to raise and or lower different heights, and which because it's in a floodway area, um, so that has to be redone and those need to be approved, and then we need to bid that out because it's more than twenty five thousand dollars of work, and then once those elevation changes are are done with the trail, then they can. Do you have so, any anticipated rock timeline, or do you? I'm going to defer to Brian on that one. You don't. You don't have to. <laughs> well, I don't know. I won't speak on working. I think the work should be done this year. For for a second. So you're going to see kind of two separate contracts, okay. if you will. One to finish Rex's project with the bridge and the landings, yeah. and then the one that Brian mentioned that McMahon has got 60% designs for <laughs> is the extension of the trail from the landings to the north up to Bay Harbor. Mm -hmm will be connection to that trail. And then the trail extension from the landing out to Broadway. So it'll go out to the west. Those two sections are what is what McMahon is working on. And those are related to that uh, permitting from the DNR. So sometime by the end of the fall, everything will be done. It's wonderful that you're <laughs> connecting all of those things. And then the Ashwaba Bay piece. Are you going to have to be there or what? Is it not to allow people to go over the bridge at past? Well, park hours or no open? No, open. No. Open. Okay. Just like Fox River Trail. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, the that entrance to the park doesn't have a close, does it? Do I know no, they only have hours. Like, just park hours. Yeah. Park, yeah. The park hours are. are but do they close that gate? No. They never close that no, gate? No. Okay. 
you never know who you'll find when in that part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very I don't go by myself. <laughs> so, um, and then the Argon, is that the park name Park? Does that connect anything, or is that just a way to get from something to something? So there, there's a couple of grand pieces, I guess. So eventually, um, there will be a sidewalk on Brookwood behind like Red Lobster and okay. uh, Pick and Save. Mm -hmm. Whatever it's called now. Yes. I've always been called Pick and Save. Central Market. Central yes, Market. Yes, there you go. So eventually, there will be a sidewalk. Um, I, I believe going down that way, um, which will go right to Argonne. So literally, people will be able to cross the street then and jump into the, into the boardwalk area of the woods and connect with the sidewalk that's already on, on Argonne. I believe also, um, maybe not in the next year, but in the next couple of years, there's been a lot of talk of, of doing a sidewalk on the Lombardi Access Road in front of all those businesses. Um, and what will wind up happening is we'll take some of the, the DOT slash Brown County right away. We'll literally move the road to the north, and then we'll be able to put the sidewalk in on the south side of the access road, directly in front of the businesses, because we're pushing the road to the north to allow that sidewalk space to happen. So there'll be two routes that will go down, you know, um, east-west, to Argonne Street, and people can jump on that sidewalk, and then they can go into Argonne Park um, with that boardwalk area. Um, that Argonne then goes all the way to Morris, and from Morris, part of that sidewalk slash trail, uh, trail will go goes directly to the Central Top, mm -hmm. I believe. That that's already in place. So it, it, it's mm -hmm. you know bits and pieces, but there there is kind of a grand plan of how some of this stuff is going to allow people to move around. Great. Thank you. Any other questions for X or X? Anything else? No, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Um, well, Owen, Natalie's not able to make it today. She just had a couple things. Um, she talked about the Frogger, which Brian had mentioned. Um, and then the she mentioned that at the last meeting in the Wellows Community Health and Wellbeing Survey will be going live soon, it runs from July 15th through August 31st. Anyone 18 and older can take this um, survey. She's gonna send it out to Joel and Mary, maybe she has to link already. Um, so please, if you see it, take the um, survey. Um, they've been doing it for several years to get some really good information about the health and wellness of our community. Um, and then based on a conversation at the last meeting regarding Holmgren Way, um, she liked to, she sent a video that I looked at too from Iowa that will look at, at our, when we were discussing home and why she said it was a really good informational video that kind of talked a little bit about the conversion from a three or four. So she wanted to share that with the committee. Um, I think that was it for well. Maybe you were going to show that video. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's really so. Agenda. Yes, we need to have agenda item. <clears throat> All right, item 8 a and um, is discussion of future sidewalk. Uh, All right, so um, I'll just kind of give a little bit of a brief background of this and then we can kind of get into the weeds of everything. Um, so that, for those of you that may not know, um, I started back here in September of 2022, so I haven't been here for quite a year. Um, with digging through and scouring through some documents in preparation for our budget cycle, kind of stumbled on a lot of projects that are kind of out there, but I don't really know their firm status and I know um, I had spoke uh, a little bit with Tracy before the meeting here and it sounds like um, some of these projects may be you know like an amendment or some sort of su supplemental document that we may have um, in addition to the last 2018 amendment to our comprehensive bike, bicycle and pedestrian plan. Um, so with that um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do is trying to get a good feel or get input from each one of the um, members of the committee or the committee as a whole as to what, what we do with these projects. Do they do they go into a formal capital improvement plan that then gets presented in front of our village board for approval? Reason for that is is you know as we get uh, try to scope projects and get ready for projects, budget for projects, um, knowing whether or not they are a project that's going to come to fruition um, is something that's very critical for us to know. 
Um, when I say us, you know, Steve and, and myself, as we're working with engineering firms, you know, some projects say that they're, you know, were planned to be completed in 2024. And then, you know, I reach out to the finance department and I say, well, have we reached out and got, you know, everything budgeted to start doing engineering in 2023? And it's like, no, I'm like, okay. So it's kind of hard to start the project be ready for in 2024 when we haven't done any of the upfront planning and stuff uh, that needs to occur before the project. So with that, you'll see that there is there is projects that are in here, some of them that are currently already you know, in progress, some of them that are pushed out you know, in the future, they just kind of said in notes uh, that I had from Doug. Um, with that, we can go through each one, one at a time, uh, or we can cover them all as a whole. I don't know, Joel or Tracy, if you have a preference. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, if I could just add a couple things as context to Brian's points here too, is that we are in the process of updating and putting together a more robust, if you will, detailed capital improvement plan. This will be the first time we've done that. Uh, each department has their own capital improvement plan that they work off, off, off of from a variety of different other plans, documents, things like that. So example, Rex has this comprehensive outdoor recreation plan. So a lot of the improvements that you see in the parks are improvements that are identified in that plan. And so when he brings a project forward, that's that's the the basis behind that um, oftentimes those things get brought up based on availability of funding availability of staff time and they oftentimes get rolled into what is called the annual budget for the village and then we kind of hand them all over that and we prioritize and some projects stay in some projects go out so on and so forth uh, but brian alluded to, alluded to it before is that oftentimes these projects are so big in nature or scope that oftentimes it takes multiple years to get the project kind of off the ground and, and running. So Lombardi Access Road is a really good example that this is going to be a major urban reconstruction of a significant portion of roadway. We need to get civil engineering involved probably 12 to 18 months in advance of that project actually taking place. And then you add in other elements such as, um, let's say Morris Avenue is a good example. We, we institute that project very quickly and designed it, put it in place without a lot of discussion about more ancillary issues such as varying utilities. So if we were going to look at varying utilities on these projects, oftentimes WPS needs another 18 to 24 months to design their work. So it just puts a little emphasis on the pre-planning and pre-discussion. With that, what we would like to do is take things that are priorities or identified projects in a bike and head plan or a court plan and put them in a multi-year capital improvement plan, which then prioritizes those tasks. And we know in advance next year what we're going to accomplish versus Rex just kind of coming or Brian just coming with a list of projects and saying, what can we do? we're going to preemptively kind of map that out over a five-year period, which then allows us to kind of plan and uh, provide for resources and funding to support those projects, even in advance of construction. So design, planning, acquisition, things of that nature. So that's why this is important. The other component to this is there's a number of projects on the list that Brian's put forth uh, for the committee to review that have been talked about, but have not been committed to. And so I think from a staff perspective, at least what I would like is the village to commit to the project, meaning committee is going to provide a recommendation, board's going to commit to a project. Now, it might not all happen in one year, but over a five-year span, it may. And by that, it gives us direction on as to what we should be working on. A really good example is the Ridge Project from Morris to Valley View. It's been in several plans. It's been talked about for years. It's been handed off over, but it's never been. Are we doing it or are we not doing it? If we're not, that's okay. Staff, staff's fine with it. It's a, it's a policy issue, but are we doing it, right? And if we're doing it, well then, okay, we know we have certain things we need to do beyond just design, engineering, and construction. Now we got to talk to neighbors. We got to get residents um, understanding of the project. There's a whole communication piece to it because that can be a pretty disruptive project. Um, so that's really kind of the goal that Brian wants to do is let's get a commitment from the committee as to what we want to recommend to the board. Then that goes to the board, gets incorporated into the capital improvement plan, and now we know what we're doing over the next five years. 
Well, and I think, in, and I was talking to Brian earlier, we talked to our Floyd meeting, um, it's great that Brian's going to be looking at the bicycle pedestrian plan when he's, he has new roads that are being completed because, you know, we're looking at it from a bike and head side. And the thing that I am concerned about, or one, you know, Brian about is our plan is old. We all know that. And we're in the process of getting it redone and getting it updated. So my concern was that we don't, you know, the recommendation here is that basically we say that what's in the bike and head plan will be what they will use when they're doing the projects. But things change. And that maybe was put in there 10 years ago, and all of a sudden the land use in that area is totally changed, or there's more people there, or whatever the case may be. And so that was my thing, Brian, that, you know, maybe some of this needs to come back to the committee for them to weigh in on it a little bit when some of these projects are going forward, because things change out there. And the other thing we've done is, and for the new members who are not probably not aware of, but just the um, leeward are, we've done our spreadsheet for years, and we put all the projects on it. It's a nice spreadsheet. It tells what's completed, what is when we're looking at doing it, where the funding is going to come, and all of that. And unfortunately, Brian didn't get our latest one when he put his list together, because I think some of these things might be in that spreadsheet that we've been keeping sure. up to date. Um, so, you know, to look at that too and see where, where that is. And the spreadsheet, you know, I talked to Rex about it. Um, I don't know if that's actually part of the bike pet plan or if that's an auxiliary and addendum, if it's actually an approved part of it. So that's the other question. You know, we talk about projects like, for instance, the one you mentioned on which I believe as a committee we had approved that sidewalk. If I remember right, but I may be wrong, but I thought we had approved it at a meeting. So we've already come out in support of that. But where does that fall? You know, does that need to go from here to the village board? Does it get into the comp plan right away, or does that all have to be put in? So I think that's well, what we need to do. Well, 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 I know we have approved it. That's, I thought we did. We, we, we had, and, and, and it was moving forward. I don't want to even say it might have been budgeted for, but it came to a grinding halt when some of the residents were really against it when approached by by staff, what, a year or two, about two years ago? And it was before me, so I uh, so I'd say about two years yeah. ago. Um, and then and then and then it was it came to a halt. So So it got a little messy. So got, got a little messy. Little messy and then yeah. also it's so we we've approved it. You know what I mean? It has yeah. been it, it, And it's it, part of the plan, right? Yeah. So when Brian was looking at the plan, that had done and the one that we've been working on again based on that work on is part of the plan. So when Brian would pull that up, he would look at that and say, okay, they're looking at this, 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 and this. And that's more current than some of the stuff in our existing plan. I, I, I think, I, and it was Doug. I mean, Doug, Doug approached the, right. the homeowners yes, on that stretch. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think Mary did as well. <clears throat> and and uh, that didn't, I don't know, there's six homes on that stretch? Yeah, six, six, yeah. Um, that didn't go real well, you know. You know, obviously there's Parking, you know, when people are looking, oh, you're taking my parking spot, so they get to sell, and so they, they had a, they had a number of concerns of why they didn't want a sidewalk in front, and, and you know, it, 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 it just it just stopped at that point. I think so, what we want to do is try to create some so, some effectiveness and decision making, and some transparency in how we get to this stuff. So you got the bike and pet plan. By and large, when a plan like that gets created and adopted. You're going to have, uh, and if you look at the bike and pet plan, there's going to be policy statements. So, like when an urban collector gets reconstructed, it sh it shall have sidewalks to this. Okay, so that's very clear to Brian that okay, we're redoing Vandenberg. Okay, that's going to get X improvement because that's the policy statement. It makes it very clear. Um, you may have situations where, um, like Cormier Road, for example. That would fall under that policy statement. It's an urban collector of material and it's going to get sidewalks when it's reconstructed. But in the plan, it also states that we're going to retrofit, let's say, sidewalk in on the north side of Cormier from Ridge through there. Okay. I will do a better job. Obviously, the plan hasn't, hasn't been updated since I've been here, but I would do a better job with encouraging the board to say, if that's truly your direction, we can accomplish that. But if you're if you are uncommitted to the concept of retrofitting that improvement onto the road prior to reconstruction, don't list that in your plan. 
because that gives direction to everybody that that's what's going to happen. And if that is the actionable item, then what year is it appropriate to do that? Because that, that will be a highly disruptive project where we need to notify those residents, have a lot of conversations with them, again, in an effort to be responsible and transparent to the, to the residents. Other projects in the plan, Marley and Ori, which you have on your sheet, are, are retrofits. Those are going to be highly controversial, highly engaging projects where are you willing to do that? If not, then I would say pull those back. Maybe those are projects that are done when the road is reconstructed. Who knows when that's going to be? We have to look at multiple plans and multiple uh, assets to determine that. If water and sewer is getting reconstructed, the curb and gutter is coming out, trees are probably coming out. A lot of the conflicts that you're going to have in a retrofit are coming out. So it makes sense to do with that. So just, just, I think Leroy and I are probably the elder statesmen on, on this committee and Tracy to some extent. Um, previous administration, the way it's done, the way it has been done, it had a different approach and it, we can change the approach. The previous approach was whatever we thought was appropriate as a committee, we would go into that biking kind of plan is why a lot of those things are in there. And it didn't take into, you know, it doesn't matter what the village board thinks, yes or no, if, if we thought it was appropriate as a committee, put it in the plan. And then as the opportunities came around to potentially put those in, if conditions changed or reconstruction happened, at that point, the village board would look and say, okay, do we want to do this? It's in the plan and could make a decision at that point. So that's why some of these projects, which may or may not ever happen, are, are in the plan. Because at some point, the bike event committee thought it would be a good idea to at least have it out there for, for viewing by the village board and other, other entities. Um, and I also, and so if we want to change it, that's fine. But just historically, that, that's why all those projects are in there. By no means does that mean that all those are going to happen. It's just that's what the bike and pet committee, because this is how we were directed to do it when, when it was being put together. Um, and I think you can accomplish you know. that by creating policy statements. So, <laughs> like, for example, all our materials and collectors are the design standard, the design scope, the, the section profile will include some type of an accommodation for pedestrians and bicycles. So, we are not, you're not being specific to this idea of this retrofit, non retrofit. At some point, the policy is built in. Okay. If you start identifying projects, one of the complaints that I've heard is, well, the you know, village board doesn't support our efforts because they don't put in these. We don't. We're not accomplishing them because we've listed these very specific roads and projects, but we have not gotten committal from the board. So yeah, it's it's great. So Ridge Road, for example, is is a prime example. Of that's a, considered a, a, a collector road in our community. By policy, it would state we would get that. The timing and sequence of that is going to be predicated on multiple factors, not just what the committee desires, right? So the committee desires to have sidewalk and bicycle accommodations on there, but it's really going to be up to the board to decide when that gets done, right? And my argument would be if the board never wants sidewalk on Ridge Road, don't incorporate it in the plan. Because now you're always going to be constantly fighting between the committee and the board. Yeah, but the board changes, and this committee changes. You know what I mean? So if it's in there, and all of a sudden it's, it's, it's not in there, like Rex kind of said, at least it's in there, and then the this board decides this at this level, right? It's like a plan, Joel. You know, you can have whatever in there, and things, some things will get done, and some will not. So the challenge, the challenge thing is like, for instance, for me. I come in and it's like, what is this? Yeah. I, it, so, so how is it supposed to work then? Is so I'm kind of just hearing yeah. what, what I hear is it's a wish list. Right. It's a it kind of it is. It's, it's, it's a wish list. list. It's a Correct. No, because, well, because then suppose what what the committee should be doing, and, and again, correct me if I'm wrong on this, then the committee every year or every two years gives a, a top five or a top 10 priorities. So then, so then it narrows down to the whole scope of all these little projects. What are the committee's priorities if they, if they had the ability to get them done? But if the committee is not so, aligned with the priorities of the board, nothing will get done. 
it's important for the committee to be aligned with the values of the board. It really is. No, it is. I, it I is. agree with you. Because nothing right. will get done. I know. I know. Nothing but Brian done. knows what roads need to be done because they look at them. Um, they're they rate them. You know. So Brian has a feel for we need to do these ten roads. Correct. What are going to be reconstructed? What are just going to get in an overlay? That's Rex right. knows that this committee has said when they do such and such on Ridge Road, we would like this. Or this is what the committee is saying. And then Brian can kind of weigh in and say, okay, well, we're not doing a total reconstruction. We're only doing an overlay right now. So that's not feasible or whatever. But it's only when the opportunity arises. Right. Not necessarily all this stuff has to be done. It's just that, hey, 40 years if ORI was ever redone. That's a sidewalk. Take a look at take a look at whether or not we want sidewalks. Yep. Our new business. It's not that we, we need them in there in the next five years. That that's that's kind of how the whole bike and pet plan was put together historically. Doesn't mean that when we redo it that it can't change. Right. But the thing that's a little bit challenging, like for myself, is so there is this, we'll say wish list. We'll call it that for now, just so we can all kind of speak in the same thing. You know, with, without it being um, adopted by the village board, you know, when I go online, I look at it, this is this is the plan. Much like if you were to say build a house, this is what we're doing. But there's a supplemental thing that's just very wishy-washy that makes it challenging to to plan anything. So when we go together and we put together a 10-year capital improvement plan, do we include all these costs for purchasing right away and putting in all this stuff? Even though the village board hasn't really had their say whether or not it should be occurring. So they kind of do have to work in tandem. You know, they need to, to hold hands and say, this is what we're doing. So if staff's on the same page as the board that's on the same page as the committee, because what's going to happen is, and Joel and I, we worked on a very controversial project in the previous municipality that we worked at. You're going to have these people that are going to come on. They are going to stand up against this project. You're going to have four page sheets of plywood saying no sidewalk. And they're going to come to the village board meetings and they're going to scream. Unfortunately, we have we fortunately we have to grab hands as a community and say this is what we're doing. We're doing it as a community. And everybody has to be on the same front. Or if we have a wish list, we wish this. The board wishes something different. We're going to fail. We will fail. We all have to be on a, on a similar front. So when we get the questions, that we're all marching in the same to the same band. Well, that this can all be accomplished. It just sounds like a number of people have changed roles and there's a history and maybe we don't have the votes on the board. I mean, there's like a lot of unknown, but we can develop a process and move this through and arrive at something like the five to 10 priorities that are then, uh, you know, updated as we knock them off. I mean, I am hearing, not asking anyone to deny or confirm, but there's doubt like on something as specific as the Ridge Road thing that we have the votes on the board. But they just made that very difficult Airbnb, whatever, mm -hmm. decision. Mm -hmm. So they're accustomed to people coming to the meeting and hollering at them and being very upset and it's going to affect their livelihood and the value in their property. So there's things that are similar to what we're talking about here, right? The very yep. same issues. So I, I do think we should do the work we're supposed to do. And as part of that sequence, you, you have such an organized mind, Tracy, we decide how and when we check in with the board on their will and their whatever on this. Yeah, and how it works for Brian. Yeah, so he can get those projects done. Like, yes. Cause I know you need a lot of lead time on it. And I think the document you put together, we had a lot of timeline in there, didn't we, Rex? Like different years that we were shooting for and stuff? There were three. There was like short term, medium term, and long term. Okay, that's right. So, so it, yeah. you know, like, it was like in the next two years up, you know, the next five years and then, then 10 years out, basically. I mean, it was just a guide, but I mean, that changes at the drop of a hat based on what development is happening. Right. All of a sudden, something needs to be. Yeah. You know, Morris wasn't even talked about being reconstructed when this plan it wasn't exactly. even it, it, I thought in anyone's yeah. mind, you know what I mean? Yeah. So then as soon as that came up, then we had to quick backtrack and yeah. say, what do we want? What do we want to do on Morris and that type of thing? So yeah, projects change changing come up that become priorities from already access from that one. I don't remember being discussed. Though. 
long time ago, and all of a sudden that's a priority, and that's fine. You know, that's what staff has seen. But I, I think, think the key is what, in order for us to, to continue, we, we need a firm direction both from the committee as to what the recommendations are. And then ultimately, we're, we will be taking this to the board as part of the five-year capital improvement plan. So what the committee is doing is ultimately prioritizing this list or any other list that it deems fit. The board's going to adopt a five-year capital improvement plan. I can assure you that, as I hate to use this as an example, but this is the example, is Ridge from Morris to Value. If that's a priority for this committee, this committee is going to have it need to advocate for that project to the board. The board has been unwilling to fund that project. Now, with that being said, if this is a priority, but the board is unwilling to fund it, then you put it on the shelf. It, it, it is just that, it's that wish list item, right? Boards will change, things will change, priorities will change, that's fine. It's still identified as a priority for the committee, but Brian and I know in the next five years, we're not touching. Or until the next year when every, it's not like we create this five-year capital improvement plan and it's only done once every five years. It is done every year. So projects move up, priorities change, Morris Avenue comes in, this project goes out. That's the, the beauty of the five-year capital improvement plan. But again, I think it's important for us to be transparent to our taxpayers saying, where did this project come from? Well, we've been talking about X project for the last five years. We designed it in year one, we did right away acquisition in year two, and then we're constructing it in year three. We went through a whole public informational campaign, all of that. Another good example of where this process would benefit us is the issue that you even see out at Alden Station and the Columbia Ridge, right? Two distinct projects that really could have been conjoined so that everything could have been done in sequence with one another and we could have some of the challenges we have. So it's important for us to have all that stuff kind of come into combination with one another and that everyone is working uh, synergistically in moving that direction. I've heard plenty of times since I've been here at this meeting, at this committee, that oftentimes the board isn't initiatives or endeavors that we would want done. Well, let's create some synergy then between this committee and the remainder of the board as to what those priorities are. But I think there's opportunities to get some of these things done if our priorities at this committee level are similar to what the board's priorities are. Should that come out of your recommendations right. now as the directors now? Um, well, uh, yes and no. So there are some things here that make sense, right? So like Lombardi Access Road, Brookwood Drive, these are all part of the plans. Those are all roads that are planned for reconstruction, right? So they're in the plan, it meets a policy statement, really easy for us to say, yeah, we, we need to incorporate that, right? So from a staff perspective, that's our ex uh, understanding. You get into a question like Cormier, okay? That road is not planned to be reconstructed in the next 40 years, but the plan says we put sidewalk on the north side. Staff says, yeah, you can put sidewalk on the north side. Will it improve safety? Sure. Will it improve accessibility? Absolutely. All those things are, Definite yes. Comes down to a policy priority. Do, do your electeds want to irritate that entire neighborhood with sidewalks? Are they willing to put their political lives, if you will, albeit it's a local office, but that's the reality of it, right? These are their neighbors, these are their constituents, these are their friends, coworkers, whatever. Do they want to put their neck out there, like the short term rental issue? and say yes to it and commit to it. That it's more of a policy decision. Does it benefit the community? Absolutely. Is it the right thing to do? Most likely. But will are they willing to to put that put that forward? The, the other thing that I'd like to add too is what we need to do is look at um, you know, our current facilities. You know, I, I look in here, you know, you see Cormier, the south side of Cormier, put in some sidewalks. You go on the north side, it's like, yeah, the north side is terrible. It's like, yeah. what are we Just doing putting it in on the south side when we can't even take care of what we have on the yes. north? Yeah. So from my, from my aspect, it's like, holy cow here. You, know, you look at this list, it's like, you know, some projects 24, it's like some projects 25, and it's like, same way, I'm like, get junk out there already. Why don't we take care of what we have? <laughs> so it, it's just, it's hard. So if, if we had that direction, 
the other thing too is our community, we have a lot of safe routes to schools. So a lot of our sidewalk was put in with federal dollars. Um, so it means that we'll use Premier again, since we're talking about it, those individuals on the north side of Premier, we plow their sidewalks. Okay, so if we go and put it on the south side, are we going to plow it? So it, it, it's going to, there's going to be those policy things that we're going to need to work through where we're plowing it on the north side because we have to. By, by federal, you know, I'm swimming back federal grants for it, so we have to. We're going to put it on the south side. We're going to say, well, the neighbor is on the south side and say, you're not plowing mine. So that are we going to commit to plowing? It's which we could, but then we need more equipment, more staff. So it's all stuff that it's not just as easy as throwing it on the wish list. We got to have a long term plan. So do we need to ramp up staff? Do we need to ramp up ramp up equipment, or should we go through and look at our existing sidewalks and say, let's take care of these first and get these so that they're manageable? You know, the the ash trees are removed, the stumps are you know going to be taken care of, but it's ugly and um, just things that we, we need to look at. I mean, when I when I see this, to see that a lot of these projects are in 24 and 25, are they even truly achievable? Probably not with the staff that we have. You know, it, it, it would, there's, you know, we'll, we'll use uh, Lombardi Access Road as an example. Believe it or not, you're dealing with wetlands there. You're dealing with the DNR, you're dealing with the DOT. It, they don't happen like that. They don't happen tomorrow or next year. That's why having some sort of a plan in place will, will kind of help to guide us and then working with the village board to get that plan approved and get their, their buy-in. So we're all, we're all on the team. I have three things. Yes. Before the Green Bay Packers started to talk about, uh, you know, the big facility and everything else, we had talked about, Rex could probably vouch for this here, we had talked about uh, Ori and Marley. Okay, and now you were talking about a collector road, but Ridge Road is a collector road. Is that what you were saying it is? Or, okay, Ori is a collector road. I'm not kidding you. You can't go up and down Ori without having traffic. It's just as much traffic on Ori as what there is on Ridge. The only roads to go to Packer Stadium or the Packer, uh, the, the site over there is through Ori and Marley. That's why we talked about sidewalks uh, Kyle and I actually rode our bicycles there during a Packer game or after, I can't remember, if it was before or whatever, to look at the traffic, the walking traffic that was on those two roads. It would be unbelievable how much walking traffic was out there. You know, cars are weaving in and out of people and everything else. And now and now we're talking about, you know, should we put sidewalks in there or not? Well, you know, we thought, like I said, we yeah. talked about this a long time ago. And we were, I, don't want, I don't want it to make it seem like we don't agree with the projects, whether they're Yes or no. It's just a matter of are they in the next five years? Okay. And then well, which ones are the priority? Okay, I'm going to mention another road yeah. on a collector road is Hampton Road. Now I know Rex is probably saying, oh, Leroy's going to come up with Hampton Road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know. I, I, I will guarantee you, I don't know if Hampton Road is on your list or not. Yes. I mean, that was supposed to have been done in 2022. It was already went through the board. And well, what are we? We're 2023. 2024, I'll bet you it still won't be done. And I'll bet you, I'll guarantee you that when I go home on Hanson Road today, there will be people walking on the south side of Hanson Road. Sure. I mean, I'm just using that as an example. Oh. So, so let's go through, let's just, if we can, I'll go through the list and then we can prioritize. Because we're not saying anything should come out of the plan. What we are saying is simply let's prioritize it so that from a funding and a finance standpoint, we have some direction and then Brian knows, okay, if this is Hanson, this is a two year project. Lombardi Access Road, that's a two year project. We gotta design this year, construct next year. That's a big deal. That's a financial commitment. We're spending tens of thousands of dollars on design in year one and then a few hundred thousand dollars in year two to, to actually construct it. But then we also wanna make sure that whatever recommendation you have is getting committed to by the village board. Because we, we, the staff, on, whether you like it or not, we answer to the village board. So whatever direction we get from them is the direction that, that we have to implement. Right, okay, Rex, did this go through the village board once before? I think it did. The village board never approved any particular project because different, I mean, they accepted the plan and the projects that were in the plan, but with the caveat that any individual project would need to go back to the village board with, with 
costs and when it was actually time to to potentially do it. You know what I mean? So whether it be Ridge or whether it be Ori or, or Marley, the village board accepted the plan with all those things in it. And that's what we're trying but, to do is take it to that next step now. But, get but it from when the time came, you know, to do it, then then those individual items, each individual item would go back to the village board and you know for, for final approval to move forward and then to do it based on whatever bids came in. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So well, then it makes was it our fault that we didn't push the issue or what? No, I mean, we we that that was the process. You know, it, there was never it's always a, it's always this is just a plan. Right. 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 The thing about a plan doesn't mean everything in the plan is going to happen. It, 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 it's it's our list of what we think are, is important. And then when the opportunities arise, because it's in a plan, now it's something to be considered, which means it would go back to the village board for for their for their ultimate decision on whether or not to move forward with it. So I think so just, I don't, just, I don't, I don't mean it's not a bad process, but that, that was the process. Okay. So even as long as I have been on this committee, I think it is, and obviously not as long as other people, newer than some, so like, <laughs> yeah, longer than some now, I guess. So that's good. But I think. The part that's always hard and always goes back and forth is always our plan versus the board's plan versus like all these things. And obviously there are a lot of factors that you guys all fit into it. I think before, like we can go through the specific ones, but I do feel like we need to come up with a better process, just facing more like my, how we do things at work even. Having, I think the rules and the set is so, okay, if a road is being redone, because I think that's how the majority of our plan, the ones that are on in there keep getting mixed up. What is the norm that's going to be done? The exceptions, you're always going to have exceptions. We're always going to have things that need to come up and be reviewed individually, but we should have an idea of what the norm is. I think you could take the list then that's there that we all like and review on those, which of those is that naturally going to happen with when they're redone. And I think we have a really long comprehensive list, and I feel like we always say we're going to be reviewing so much of it each, this, that, the other thing, but I feel like if we could more align that with, let's sit down with it in whatever month makes sense that we then prioritize off of that list, not things that are going to come up with project because we already know that those are going to come up with that. But based on the list of, I don't know what 50 things are on that every year at the right time that then coincides with when you guys need to do your things, what are our top things on there that if they are not being touched for other reasons, we would still want brought to the board's attention. That way something like Hanson or things that we keep saying year after year, we're not seeing being done. We aren't, they would stay on that list each year and you would have that list that at least the board is looking at and then saying yes why no wetlands all these things to come into it but it could prioritize more of what our wish list is i like the term of referring to that too because i think that gets confusing too when it's like what's the bike and head plan the board has a very different answer to that than we have for that and really that should be the answer like we have our wish list but what is our True bike and ped plan of like what are is the village's expectation of roads being redone, new roads going in, all of that, and then we should take that a step farther and take our wish list plan and I think every year be reevaluating that because again the village look how much has changed in the last year, let alone the last three years. What made sense then, like I agree, the areas by the stadium again that's been talked about since I've been on the committee as well. I think there's a lot of stuff that gets talked about, but like to your point, then what like i feel like and that's where then there's this i feel like frustration back and forth between not only us but also the frustration at board level and again that's the last thing we want because if we're not jiving nobody's happy so i feel like we need to on our side of it obviously we're also representing it specifically from bike and ped because that's the committee we're on and that's what we're supposed to be doing um, but we're also i feel like we say our part we don't always know and understand all the other pieces to that and I'm sure very well very well there's all those reasons why some of those things don't happen but I think if we had a better process where we said okay so out of our list of 50 these are the top five things that we think should be put in even if you're not constructing these roads this is why we think it's important that can then go to the board and they can choose to do it or not but even if they're not at least then we would have that communication back at the next meeting to say why that's not being done and then we can decide the next year when it comes back to, because like you said, things get looked at. So every February, we can look at it and say, okay, this is what we asked for last year. Do we, is it worth putting it in our top five or do we know? They said no last year because of this reason. That didn't change. Let's not put that on and waste our time on something and have everyone waste their energy on something that 
we are realistic that at this point in time, we know still isn't going to change because of whatever the reason was. I think there's just a lot of, we'll say, miscommunication or lack of communication, I think, both ways. So I think if we change our process, that will not only make everyone less frustrated, I think we'll actually get, some, get things done and we'll everyone else have a clearer picture, too, of what's for what. Like, the Excel spreadsheet that's a mile long, like, what is that truly utilized for? That's is that just a thing that we all compile our wish list or things we get from people that are telling us they think would be nice to have in the village? Or is that something that we're under the understanding the board is actually using to create their plans or public works, whatever? If that's not really how that's being used, people should know exactly how those different tools are being used. Because I think everyone has different expectations of what some of these tools are, and I think that's where the problem's coming in. People aren't aware of the expectation the other ones have. Yeah. At, at the end of the day, I believe that we're all kind of thinking the same thing, we're mm -hmm. maybe just articulating it differently. I think it, what's important here is this committee is recommending kind of policy direction for the village that ultimately the board adopts and implements, right? And they implement it through staff. Um, so those policies are really important. Those are why this plan is, the, the bike and pet plan is so important and why it shouldn't sit on the shelf is because it, it needs to be that living, breathing document that provides direction then ultimately to staff and to the board as to the direction and the strategy that it wants to achieve. So for roads being reconstructed, it's arterial collector, it's important. Beyond that, the bike and pet plan may identify specific projects that are of the highest priority because of a variety of accessibility or safety issues that it wants to advocate for to the village board. So let's say Ridge Road is that, that example. Hanson is that example, right? We're not planning on reconstructing that road, but it is a high priority because we have this 10 foot wide cattle path down the side, side of the street, and it's clear that there are people walking there, right? So let's make it more accessible. So those projects are, are identified. From there, it gets put into our five-year capital plan, and now it's up to us as staff to take the information from committee and say, oh, this, these are the recommendations, the firm recommendations from the committee. We would like to get these done in the next five years. Can you commit yourself to these projects so that we can ensure funding and sequence of events is planned and scheduled? It adds transparency as well, so that roads like Hanson, Bridge, or Mirror, whatever they are, it gives us, oh, this road is being done in the next three years. We need to get out ahead of it and notify those property owners adjacent to that project the impacts that this is going to be having. Because there's nothing worse than having a project fully designed, going out to bid, and then also the project fails because one property owner on Ridge Road doesn't like it. That's literally what happened. So what we're trying to do is build again some synergy between committee, between board, between action, transparency, and that's ultimately what we're trying to do. Because right now it, there's a little, it's disjointed and disconnected and we're not rallying behind any project. Everyone's doing their thing in a bubble and everything, it can't be done in a bubble because Brian has to interact with Bryce, Joel has to, it all has to work together. And Brian knows like what projects should be moving forward. And I, I like the wish list thing because some of those projects aren't going to be part of a reconstruction. They're going to be a standalone project. And if we feel very strongly about that, we're going to go, okay, Hanson Road Sidewalk is something we feel we need to put out there. Um, so I think that maybe for our, instead of trying to go through this all today and figure this out, maybe a staff could sit down and Rex, if you can share with um, Brian, mm -hmm. let's see, Joel, Brian, the um, document that we've been using for many, many years, and then between the three of you, you guys can come back next meeting and say, okay, here's what we're at. Here's kind of the wish list things. Brian can say, these are the projects we know we're doing. These roads are falling apart. We're going to have to do something. And it all kind of feeds together then. Then we can make some good informed decisions based on what staff is providing us from. So I don't know what's on your document, but I know that what would be helpful to me is to know, like, um, the projected cost, where that money's coming from what the potential hurdles are to that project, what work has been done on it before. And I'm not talking about paragraphs on these things. I'm talking about bullets so that when I come in, I, I just know. And I'd like to pick a number we cap this at. Is it 10 or 15, you know, that you bring to us yeah. and then we're going to winnow it? Yeah. Do, do other people want to know that information, though? Is that just me who would want to know that as we would go to 
prioritizing the list. I think it's good. I think the number part of it, the dollar is going to be tough. Yeah, the dollar is going to be tough. how far out it is. And a lot of those dollars, honestly, you're not going to know them until you start getting a little bit further into design. You can somewhat, I don't want to say slip on them, but a lot of it is, say, utility impacts. So you want to put in a sidewalk, but TDS or Spectrum has fiber boxes right where the sidewalk needs to be. That could be create a challenge in itself. So, um, can that be in, in, in those people that's in there, or do you not know that until you start the project? Mm -hmm. like that, put it. You, you could know that, but, but to, to take the time, I mean, I don't know how many are on this list. So, oh, if, it's oh, yeah, I mean, just this no list alone, time. to me, for me to put all points together and cost, I mean, probably have about at least 40 hours. Because okay, you physically. What could you do that would not be an over part of your time? What information, decision making information could you provide? I think that's, it might be beneficial to, you know, we can. Put, put, say, your top 10 together, and we could look at, say, a top 10 and say, hey, this one, there's no wetlands, utilities don't look like they're going to be too challenging. There's going to be, say, 10 houses. Of course, the majority of the people are going to say they're not in favor of the sidewalk because you do never know. So it, it's possible that they may be in favor of, but, um, you know, that that's one thing. But a lot of them, you know, if there's businesses and stuff like that, they may want the sidewalk. So it's going to be really a case by case scenario as to each project. Um, that's why, you know, me when I looked at this list and hear that there's even a bigger list, it's like, whoa, you know, bike and pet is, you know, one of one of my roles, but it's it's honestly a book in a bookshelf, and just to understand, you know, where to where to focus is is really key. I think for for us going forward in the short term. What we would want to know is what the priority of the committee are. We know Lombardi Access Road is going to get done. We, we know Brookwood is going to get sidewalk and cable. Those have to get done in order to meet our tax incremental financing requirements. Those are tip three projects. Those will be complete. Ridge Road is the example that is what do we do? That's in tip three. It can be accomplished, but is there a political will to do it? Is that a desire of the committee? to have that section of Ridge Road have sidewalk on the east side of the road from Valley View to Morris. So that's what we're asking from the committee. And then in what time frame would that need to be done? Well, if it's a TIP 3 project, it has to get done in 24. So that's, for us, is important. We know Hanson's important. So Hanson's in that mix, right? So when does that get done? Between now and, let's say, 2028, OK? So the next five years, when does that get done? Is that 2024, Leroy? Is that 2025? Is that 2022? Right? When does that get done? But that's that's a priority. Okay. Um, then you get into a little bit more challenging elements. A um, couple things. Uh, Vander Perrin is on your list from Oneida to Home. That road was reconstructed not too long ago. There's some right-of-way constraints. Sidewalk was difficult to put in. There's also an undeveloped area on that. It's also county truck highway, so there's a variety of factors. Now, one could argue that should have been put in when the road was reconstructed a couple years ago. It wasn't, though. So now what do you do? Do you wait for development to occur so that you can put the sidewalk in? Because where that vacant lot is is where you have tight right away constraints. Okay? So those are kind of the issues that we have. That If it's a priority, where does it fall in the next five years? How did these things get on this list? These are from the bike and pet plan itself. Were there more things than that? Um, those the things that are done in the agenda. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. Yeah, the ones that are in the agenda get put. So what I did is digging through my predecessor's yeah. documents. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, I compiled three documents into one, which is what you have in front of you. Okay. So, me going, what you know, none of them were formal, none of them were adopted. I looked through old board meeting minutes, going all the way back three years, saying, did the board take formal action on this? How about the individual? Projects. Yeah, no, there is there's on, nothing on the there. Plans, the project we were in, they, they did. And that's what we're asking for now is to take it that next step. What gets done? That's where Ryan and we as staff need to have that direction so that when Leroy comes next month, he's like, when's Hanson Road getting done? <laughs> we could tell you. Yeah. Okay, it's going to be in, it's, it's in the capital improvement plan. It's in this year. We're going to start design next, whatever it is. We have that definitive answer then. Whereas now it's just 
in the plan? And then we get, always get questioned, well, are we doing it? And then we question ourselves, are we doing Ridge Road? Are we doing Hanson? Are we, we don't know. So we're kind of, as staff, forcing the envelope a little bit, both at committee and the board, to commit to something. And that something may be nothing, that, that's fine. That's, the board wants to do absolutely nothing, that's the direction we get, right? But whatever it is, you tell us. Because right now, we don't know. We have to review the policies as they stand. Yeah, and that's that's some of the challenge, because I did review the policies. I reviewed the, the comprehensive bike and pet plan, and the challenge is, is the policies in the wish list, they speak two different languages. <laughs> and that that's where I go. I don't know. I come to Joel. Joel, I don't know. He's like, let's sit down. Let's talk with the bike and pets. Have a tough conversation. Yeah, let's. Right? What and I, priorities? I knew this wasn't going to be an easy conversation. <laughs> I, I honestly told Joel this morning, it's like, yeah, I got to be out of here at six. So let's see what we can do. <laughs> um, because I, I knew this wasn't going to be easy. Because it's, you know, I look at them. Can they all be done? Absolutely. Do they all make sense? Yeah, for the most part. You know, there's some of them that I'm like, eh, you know, for me, we already kind of talked about that. It's like, eh. it's like, let's do the north side first, get that fixed, and then let's talk about adding on the south side. So there's, there's little things for some of them that it's just, um, I know Tracy, we kind of talked about, um, we talked about Wabi um, between the Bell Insight and Five Guys uh, Burgers and Fries. Well, getting some on that south side of Wabi, and I, I saw an email that Doug had with DOT, and they're like, you're going to have to redo a lot of the traffic signals there. And there's a huge pork chop. I only because 41 northbound off ramp has its own slotted right turn lane that's free flowing. So you have cars coming through there at 40 miles an hour. They're going to say, hey, there's a pedestrian. You got to stop. So a lot of things that, you know, aren't really factored in that would be, yeah, like, um, I, don't, I don't know what your name, so I apologize, but just, you know, a, a challenge with, with a project like that, that can be done, it can, but is it worth 1.2 million? Or should we focus those efforts on five other projects? That's a little bit why even knowing cheap, moderate, or expensive is just helpful yeah. to know on, on yeah. budget impact. Right. Yeah. Because I don't even know what a pork chop is. I can't <laughs> Okay. <laughs> You're going to learn a new topic. Okay. Yeah. So, so a little splinter <laughs> island. So nice colored stamp concrete. It's slang name. Some people call pork chop splitter island. So if you've ever driven north on 41, got off in Oneida, and turned right to go past, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. So there's a Seven. big pavement yeah. area there that keeps you from the median. Yeah. Call it yeah. Median. Um, and that, that sidewalk would have to cross through there. And those cars that are free flowing on 41 to get onto Oneida, you're going to have to somehow stop them. Um, or hope that the pedestrian knows that they have to shoot a gap with the car going 45. So um, it's not undoable, but we don't even know what we need. We would put that one down a little and let right. this roll up. So, yeah, yeah to, to just help expedite the process, I think the recommendation from Tracy was let's get the list. The, the larger kind of spreadsheet yes. list of projects. Brian and I and Rex, we can sit down yeah. and talk through it. And Kelly, that should be in Sue's file. Don't spend 40 hours. Uh, <laughs> what, <laughs> what we will plan on doing is kind of going through those hot button projects that we know we're going to get right. done. I mean, you guys know. Five it. years. Yep. Okay. We put those together. We can we can categorize them as Kim you had mentioned. You know, like inexpensive, moderately expensive, largely expensive kind of projects. We can kind of put them in those three buckets, if you will. Um, ultimately, those projects will likely be incorporated into our five-year capital improvement plan. This will be the first time we have kind of a robust plan that the board will adopt. Um, we will come back to committee, of course, with that with the, that list for your recommendation. But our goal is to get the board to commit to those projects in that capital improvement plan. And on all likelihood, whatever is committed to in 2024 gets done in 2024. That's the goal. So if you guys do that, could you bring it back to the August meeting then? Is that put in the timeline and budget stuff that's kind of starting to gear up? And then, Kelly, if you could get out to the committee members that list that we have. So that's everybody good. knows what it is, and you guys can look at it. For those of you that have not, I'm going to be where I know by heart by now. But, um, <laughs> but that would be a good document for us to at least look at. And then when they come back, 
And I'll guess with their recommendation based on that list, the wish list that we have, Brian knowing, okay, these projects are priorities, these are ones that we could do, then we can get a good feel for it and what our input should be into it. That's I think they'll make us some sound decisions. Right. Yeah. And Kelly, you might not even know you, you have it. Basically, <laughs> it's the, the bicycle accommodation recommendations. It's the pedestrian accommodation recommendations that are in the bike and pedic plan, but it's just in the last couple of years, usually there's two or three new projects that have been added to it. And then on some of the projects that were completed, we've just marked completed. So it, 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 it probably will look exactly very similar to what is in the bike and pedic plan, but it's just more of a, a working, more updated document. It'll, it'll, it'll look just like the bike that. And from a government's perspective, are there policies? Are there any policies that we should? They are in the bike head plan, and hopefully yeah. that would be able to have gotten it at the hearings or someone was going to get you the bike head plan. So hopefully you have a copy of that. But there has general if you policies that don't, I know I have. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, just reach out to Kelly, and she could get it for you if you do not have it. And that would okay. give you more of the sky level, I guess say it and they'll give the policies and or set. But again, remember that document is old. It needs some updating and we all know that. So just please look at it, but keep that in mind that that's something that we need to look at updating in the near future. And I think the committee has been pretty open about the idea. We do have a road project that's coming up that is planned for a reconstruct, which you know, we've had a few. Lombardi Extra is a good example. Bring it through committee, we review it. I think once we get final, like 30% design, when we get to that point, bring that through too, so the committee can kind of see the, the typical section and like the cross section of the road, so you see how the layout's going to be. Um, but even if it's a local residential road, we can bring those through as well. We don't do a lot of major reconstructions, but the ones that we do, here's an opportunity to make sure we address it appropriately. Um, we can bring those through committee until such time that we have a more Updated plan, clear policy direction that's committed to by the committee and the board. Yeah, yeah, process like Jessica said that we can all use and we'll make it easier for everybody. Does that yeah. sound good? No, it, it does. It sounds very good. The okay. one thing I would add is, you know, starting hopefully around in like 2027 is when we're really going to be getting um, very deep into a, a, a road reconstruction program. So a lot of our um, water main stuff is 25 years old. So at that point in time, you know, we'll really be able to hopefully start checking things off from the list um, in the comprehensive bike and pet plan because we will be doing full reconstructs. It won't be, you know, we'll still be doing make built days, but we do have segments of watering that are 75 years old, so brittle that um, you could almost touch them and they're like glass. Um, so we're going to start getting to the point where we're going to, in 2027, approximately is when we're going to have to start doing more reconstructs. So sounds good. All right, so do you gentlemen have your directions? Does that sound good? We don't need a motion or anything like that. Okay. Then we'll go on to eight B, which is the winter maintenance on trails. Um, we did this for the first time this past year and I right. just did a quick report on what it was like and how it went. Yeah, absolutely. So um, this isn't really a, a fully, I just kind of bullet pointed, bullet pointed some items out. Um, so this last year, 2022, 2023, was our first year of um, removing still on select trails. But I think we're selected by the Bike and Pike Committee. Um, the trails, just mention real quick, the ones, what trails we did. Yep, so the trails that we did, we did from Marina Circle, um, down around Bay Harbor. Uh, that was one of them. We did Wabi. Um, we did Sand Acres and Main Ave. Uh, did I cover them all the X? Correct. On Main Ave, it was between Bridge and San Acres Drive. Correct. So, so people could make a loop around their neighborhood. Correct. And that does not include sidewalks that we cleared so on. So that's, we're kind of holding that whole separate of this. There is about 21 or 22 miles worth of sidewalk that we cleared so on. Um, that's part of the uh, Safe Routes to School program. Um, so with that, I would say the overall program was successful. There was very limited concerns. Um, we did get some feedback from some individuals that they're happy about it. Of course, do more, um, which is always easy for people to say when guys have already plowed snow for three days in a row, working 12-hour days, and then they get to plow more snow. But um, we'll get to that. 
Um, so removal of snow did sometimes get delayed when we did have those back-to-back -back snowstorms. So some people may have noticed, A, you know, it used to be the day after you guys plowed the streets, you plowed the sidewalks. Well, sometimes the day after we had to plow the streets again. So it kind of did get delayed. Really, we didn't get many people that were overly concerned, more just asking. Are you going to plow it again? Yep, we'll get there. But we've been advised to do it during normal business hours. Um, the other thing too is if the snowfall falls on a Friday. Plowing the streets on a fly Friday, we're planning to have the guys come in on a Saturday or Sunday as much as they probably like the double time or overtime. Or overtime. Um, we waited until Monday. So those users that wanted to use it on the weekend unfortunately had to put on their boots rather than wearing their tennis shoes. Um, with that, um, some of the main challenges that we encountered were just kind of equipment mobility on um, the size. So some of the trails have, you know, hard 90 degree turns. We're a lot of times plowing with pickup trucks. As you know, a night a pickup truck doesn't make a 90 degree turn. So we kind of did the best that we can, but kind of left some of the um, areas, especially in your intersection, kind of messy. Um, you know, because generally the guys didn't take the time or didn't have the time to go and shovel everything. Um, and when you're plowing with a you know a 10 foot wide or eight and a half foot wide blade, when you're trying to go through a curb ramp that's maybe five feet, you got some scraps in the middle that are sometimes left there. Um, with that, uh, I would say the, the most timely part was the removal of the snow uh, on Wabi near the businesses. Uh, a lot of times the businesses would get to removing their snow before we would, and then we would go through and we'd leave kind of a windrow in their driveways. Uh, we would then go back and kind of do some cleanup just to make sure that they didn't have these awkward windrows. So that would say that was the most timely part. Removing the snow uh, in trail sections along the river where it's just kind of smooth sailing, not as much, you know, for challenges there. Um, with how that, how did it go with the paper bricks around the break? I didn't hear any issues, so no news is good news. They, generally, they just raised the blade. They up did. And yep. Up yep. They just had the blade uh, float about a half to three quarters of an inch. Um, and then just let the sun take care of what we're doing. Um, crews did have to work on getting some of the trails marked out before the winter season. Um, of course, you know, the trail along the river, you know, you got to make sure that you stay on it, not that you're up in someone's backyard. Um, so it did take a little bit of time, but nothing too crazy. Overall, I would say uh, impact, fiscal impact was about $7,000. Uh, how I got about that number is uh, 10 winter events in which we removed snow. Two operators, three um, hours per operator. So each event was about six man hours. Um, with that, there was, of course, some additional equipment damage. But anytime you plow snow, as goofy as it sounds, stuff usually gets damaged. There's wear parts on plow trucks, um, shear pins, stuff like that. It, I don't know if there's ever a snow event that a truck doesn't come back. At least one of the trucks out of our fleet that needs some sort of work. That's just the price of doing business. So. With that, if you guys have any questions, I'll definitely answer them. Or if I don't know the answer, I'll dig into it. Um, but I would say overall, there was it was a success. I don't know if you guys have any other input. I mean, maybe you guys will tell me you failed. Try again. Um, but I would say it, it went all right. Oh, I appreciated it. <laughs> Good deal. Those trails all the time. Yeah, it seemed like it went well. It was nice to I saw people out on the trails. Mm -hmm. It's good. Um, when you say the 7,000 monetary impact, that's basically manpower and equipment use. So it's not like the, we had to budget $7,000 extra to do it. It was just part of our Correct. regular Correct. Yeah, so essentially it's cost. mainly mainly those dollars are manpower. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, reprioritizing what guys may have been working on. Um, so maybe they were supposed to be doing some cleaning and grubbing, you know, somewhere or, you know, some sign work, whatever. It's just kind of re allocating their job tasks. Do you think it's something that we could continue on in the next year and add another trail to where you add on that? I, I would say we could we could look at potentially adding. I would probably want to know what trail it is before okay. I say yes, just okay. based on the equipment that we have and stuff. I want to make sure that we can do it. Okay. Um, I'd also want to obviously talk with, with Rex and Lee because um, it's obviously going to take away from time if we need something else. So. Yeah. Not opposed to it, just want to know, you know, what, where we're thinking. Um, a lot of the areas that we, we did have selected, it's kind of like we got equipment kind of in that area. Yeah. Um, when Rex talks about, you know, Main Ave Trail, he used a lot of the same equipment that he used out at Cornerstone because that equipment's there. Yeah. 
Um, so it's it's more of just learning where or where there might be interest and then just kind of seeing what we can make happen. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, Brian? Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Um, item C is Brian again. Discussion of potential recommendation on a requested Packerland crossing south, excuse me, requested Packerland crossing south of 172. This came up, I think, I don't know if this even came to like head committee, but I think I had a call on it and then it was discussed with like was it? Okay. it was recommended for okay. for and then Richard. Okay, and then Doug did look into it, but I don't think we ever had anything back to us saying no, this is where of, this kind is. Of got dropped. That's what I but, but we did discuss it and we did oh I, I okay. believe we voted that it was a good idea. So. Okay. Okay, did so that's where it said so I know. Move forward. Right. Go ahead. Did you discuss I don't remember this. Tell you the truth. Uh was the discussion about where it would be? I don't think we got that far out. I mean, I think a resident, Doug met with the resident out there, a couple residents maybe, and then they talked about it, and then Doug, I think, put it in the capital it plan was, or something. It was the gal who sat here to it. Was it Linda? Was it Linda? Yeah, Linda. Yeah. So, so we, we did discuss location. We discussed it potentially being at Carroll uh, at Carroll or at West Palestine. I was going to pick West Fulton. Those were the two options that at least were floated. Um, and then I don't know if they got any further than that. Yeah. And Brian, I know you did some research into concept. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I said about this concept. Yeah. The, pretty much the, all that I know is, that, and Rex kind of already touched on it, was all that I could see in Doug's notes was just go across at West Fulton or Carroll, and it was planned to be done in 2025. So, which, which was uh, kind of a wish. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like throw the bean bag, what holes it go in? 25 it is. Right. <laughs> so there it, 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 it was no, it, I, I think Doug probably picked that date just from the project load that he had. Yeah. And, and, and which, which is flexible. Right. Move it up, move it back, depending upon. Yeah, I don't think he got into it. Maybe you found more about like the specific design of it, like at all. I guess, as well, said, yeah, I, and, and there was a lot of things that were. I, I did again. I this is from over a year ago that we talked. I, I think they were looking at those two sites, and then obviously we needed to call or talk touch base with Brown County yeah. because Packer likes the Brown County Road, and, and you know, what did they think? Are they going to oppose this? Are they going to be okay with this? And so there was, yeah. you know, there was some discussion there. So, I mean, if you look at your map, you can see how many residential is across that. Have a hard time getting over to that trail, so it's definitely a need. Um, and this committee came up with it as a need. So I guess if we're just looking for the committee to say whether this is something we want to ask staff to do some more direction or do some more research into to see if it's something that's important for us and look into it further. If you guys would like to continue pursuing that, because you're saying right now the the only two. Um, Whatever it's called, on the lights, the, the one way down yeah, on Packer Land, and then at 172 would be the two lights that are out there. Okay, yes. Yeah. And they, you know, we're looking, so we're looking for something kind of mid between mm -hmm. there with more of a protected crossing that would be safe because it's a four lane road and mm -hmm. it's hard to get across at certain times. So, um, so well, that was an impetus coming from this committee. What could it be? Like, what's a possible right. option? <laughs> Yeah, so you could use, uh, um, they have what's referred to as like a box system, which essentially a close example of that is, uh, I guess if you think of like Lodge Kohler, there's a there's a crosswalk there, you can push a button, there's light staff flash. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a, a, just a rectangular rapid flashing beacon, which are kind of a low level of that, where essentially it's just two pedestrian signs on each side of the road. You push a button, and then there's two lights that wig wig back and forth. Just to kind of draw your attention to that pedestrian. You could put in um, you know, a pedestrian refuge area kind of in the center of the island. So you're only crossing two lanes, we'll just call it a median, um, to allow people to um, you know, rest there or wait until there's another gap for the other two lanes of traffic. Um, those would be, I'd say, the most common items. I mean, of course, you could do a pedestrian bridge and go over the top, but that's probably not reasonable, probably not cost effective, but an option. 
Um, you can do a you can do a tunnel, <laughs> but um, no, because because it is four lanes and people drive pretty fast. They do, yeah. You, know, you want to do something there because kids are going to cross on there. The thing that's getting more and more challenging is just distracted driving. So unfortunately, if you know, regardless of what you put up for signage, you could push that box system, you could push that rapid flashing beacon if people are looking out at their phone. It, they're effective. The yep. people that are driving how they should drive, um, unfortunately, more and more people are distracted when they're driving. So, Riverside has a hawk signal on it. Now. Yes, so that's the closest hawk signal, I think, in the area. And then the RRPs are in Cormier, there's a couple in Cormier, and out by the stadium is a good example of an RRP. So, they both have different <clears throat> ways that they work and how effective they are. So. I feel like the ones in Cormier have done a lot. Of because I feel like they get used all the time. You see them, and I just live over by both of them. So I feel like you always see people there, but I feel like before cars never slow down when someone was standing there, where the lights flashing just make everyone do it. Or I feel like before everyone was like, well, that car's not stopping, I'm not stopping, and everyone just kept going. Yeah. And I feel like those did a ton of good there. So I feel like simple things like that can make a huge difference. Yeah. Well, they're, they're pretty affordable. Um, the rapid flash of beacons. So, if, you know, Hawk systems are a little bit more involved uh, when it comes to costs. So. so, I guess the thought on this is number one, does the committee still feel this is a good idea? Picking up, I guess, from where we were about a year and a half ago. And if so, I mean, if you take a look on, on the map, the two points that were suggested were uh, West Point. Which is kind of where you see uh, Jackson Point on there. So that's 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 West Balsam. Then if you go up north, uh, across the street from what is that, Surgard Storage? That's Carroll. I believe that's Carroll. So those yeah. are the two spots. The farther north you go, the closer you get, obviously, to 172, which you can see at the very top. Yeah. So I I, I think we were leaning towards. Do we, I would, if, we, if it was me, I would say Paulson. And I, I, I mean, I, I bike there, so I mean, yeah. I mean, and I know other people, uh, you know, across there. Right. And not only that, but you're going into that Paulson goes into that industrial section that's right there also. If if we are to pursue this, and then someone we need to call Brown County, we want to narrow it down. Right. To where we want it. Yes. I know. Where do we want to go? We're going to ask Brown County. Mean, would we ask them first, or we would we go to Village Board and get there? Yeah, this is something that's a good idea or not a good idea first. Should they? I, I would I would say you go to Village Board with the recommendation, or it's at some point we have to enter into some kind of intergovernmental agreement right. that the board would have to approve of anyway to put because yeah. the Brown County wouldn't. I don't see them sharing any costs in the application of it. So mm -hmm. no, they won't. I would just go through board first so that we're right that way. Do you think there's some grants for this type of thing? Possibly. Like through the MPO or something that we could get some funding and mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a great connection a large, a large would, amount of people. Yeah, would it be really disruptive to also put a little island in there? You can yeah, get probably it. would. You way too much to yeah, It's hard to ask. It's, it's, it makes it so much safer. It's four you know, know, it just yeah. It, it all depends on, I, I, I'll be very honest, I haven't set my eyes and really thought about each intersection. Mm -hmm. If it's something that is as easy as maybe there's areas where it already is, say, five lanes, because there's a left turn lane, a dedicated left turn lane, they can kind of somehow incorporate that. But if it's strictly just the four lanes, same width, the entire way through, it's going to be far more challenging because you're going to have to push out curb and gutter, push out lane. Um, so. But are we still, is this a project we still, I guess, as a committee, feel is important? If that, it that's is, a good question. Should we bring it back as the list, the wish list, right. and yes. prioritize it based against everything else? Right. And see if it's something that we... Well, let, let me ask this, too. Yes. So a lot of times with these crossings, you need, like, a sidewalk on both sides. Obviously, there's only a trail on one side. Is that going to be an issue, putting a crosswalk when on um, the... East side of the roadway, and I, and I don't know this. Really, it's just it, it's street traffic. There's not like a sidewalk 
to connect to it. Just you're you're going to have to give the people somewhere to go. Yeah, right. But, yep. Uh, you're going to uh, have to have a curb ramp in one of the quadrants of the intersection. Um, so if there is someone that is hard, hard of eyesight, they can go across the detect the warning fields and get across to the other side of the road in a safe area. That's kind of my, yeah. I mean, I don't say it's my, yeah. it's just a concrete pad. Is there something that exists similar, like when we're trying to figure out some of the speed stuff where they put up those temporary signs that they could put something in each of those spots that's like a temporary flashing thing so that you can see where people are actually crossing more as they're so you'd see like this got pushed 15 times on this day at this spot versus it only got pushed five there. So like that exists just to be able, because one, you know, flashing lights, I think having something like that that moves around again, I have no idea the legalities of that or anything, but then you also get the data from that to actually figure out where the people that are living in that area are coming from. Because I think you could even, you know, Carol comes from way down all the way up, so I could see that be like, a good spot because of just the how you know the further yes. energy down coming all the way up everybody the activity yep. but i also could see like you know also on this side of carol there's not as potentially as many pedestrians as over here to the Bolson. so like you know it would if we're gonna go down the road just wondering if we're getting data from like the actual people that be using it where would it be right so you can have thing? cameras put up that detect or count pedestrians um You'd have to somehow orient them, obviously, so they're not counting right. ours. Right. Um, but but there is an option to do that. You'd obviously probably want to wait till when school's in session, um, just in case you are trying to also collect the information from students that are trying to get to school. Um, or maybe our thoughts are generally this is only going to be recreational use; it's not as much utilitarian use. So if I were to offer a suggestion to is maybe take a look at Carol Lane. Carol is listed as planned bicycle lane mm -hmm. on the future on the future bike and pet plan. In addition to that, Carol is considered a minor uh, collector street all the way to. So if you think about who you're picking up over time, if you if we were to add sidewalk or pedestrian improvements, that would that's where it would connect to. So putting it at also, although it makes sense because I think people will probably cut down to that because uh, maybe it's a little bit easier further south. Yeah, but that makes sense for Carroll. But the connectivity is going to be right. under Carroll. And you already have a sidewalk on Carroll all the way to, right? It doesn't go all the way to Agra Lane. Where? Is it Agra Lane? Yeah. 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 On Carroll? Yes. No, There's yeah. no sidewalk on Carroll. Just to back. Yeah, nothing's on Carol at all. Okay. No, it's on Ponderosa. Ponderosa. That's cool. Okay. That's cool. And right. Babcock has sections of sidewalk. Yeah, Ponderosa doesn't go through, it stops at Babcock. Yeah. 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 Okay, so what are our wishes on um, Packer Lane Crossing? Uh, ask Brian and Joel and Rex to look at it as part of our discussion with a wish list and everything else and then see where it ranks in there. Yeah. And that's a big project because I'm sure now at least to get some ideas on what we have included in that as well. And I think we just say Carol on there at this point because that makes the most amount of sense to try and narrow that. Yeah, because it's not because I don't like to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other questions or discussion on that one? I don't need a recommendation on that, do you, Joel? No, no. Okay. All right, and then item 8B is discussion on home and away presentation from June. Um, we had Cole came in from June and did the presentation on the, his study of home and away. And um, I don't know if anyone had any chance to look, think about it a little bit more, has other questions, any other information that we would like to <coughs> See if we can get more information on certain aspects or anything like that. Um, Natalie did find a lot. A lot. Iowa um, Department of Transportation did a, a really nice video on three lane, really the three lane, and it's just like a five minute, I think, or six minute, six minute. Um, so maybe we can watch that, and that might trip some things in your head, and then um, just to get an idea of what else is out there, if you would like to do that. Okay.
So, I mean, a lot of the things that were said in there, Cole touched on with his presentation too, like some of the different aspects of it. Um, I don't know if any of you had any time to think about it a little bit more, any questions or things that um, you would like to research. I did reach out to the city of Appleton because as Cole mentioned in his presentation, College Avenue was doing a pilot of College Avenue. Appleton's doing a pilot of College Avenue for 18 months and changing it to a three lane. Um, so I'm going to reach out to them. Yeah, starts start okay. construction starts or restructuring starts. Oh, is it? Okay. So I was going to reach out to the mayor there and then the public works director because they were very involved in it. And evidently the business community there was involved in it as well. So I was going to reach out to the one that's in charge of their business community and just see kind of some of the things they ran into and how how they went through the process and maybe they even <coughs> kind of have FAQ like a fact sheet that you know we could look at and see if there's any information on that we would like to share as well or get more information. Um, so that's not my fault. Um, so if anybody has anything else they were thinking about or any other questions or Joel or you know, anything or X in regard to it or where we're at with the whole process. I think at, at this point one of the things that I would like to do I think to help what I've heard from village board members is that there's concern about Packer game day traffic and major events. So um, I think that would be probably the largest hurdle to get over is how do you handle traffic on those large volume events with with a, effectively a two lane road. So my recommendation would be to we could hire an engineering firm here as anybody could do it theoretically and go out and do traffic counts on game days to get an idea of what that traffic volume is based on the report you have your annual average daily traffic count at about five to six thousand vehicles per day but um let's say back or game day what is that increase to and then get get a timing component to that too so is it like the last two or the two hours post game day get an idea of what that is um and then from there we can even talk with our public safety folks and say even if we went to a three-lane road what would there would be, have to be some kind of accommodation or game day modification to the traffic pattern on that road what would that look like and how much additional um, labor would be required to accommodate that i think that would be if you were going to present some kind of recommendation to the village board right now, I strongly <coughs> suspect that that's going to be your biggest hurdle is that game day traffic, the traffic lines of those peak events. How do you how do you overcome that? So I think more data would would help alleviate that. With that being said, a couple of things that I found is uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, about five years ago, did a road diet on Maryland Avenue, which is a main thoroughfare right through town, and that road sees about. 20,000 vehicles per day. So that's substantially higher. That's more vehicles per day than Oneida Street receives on a typical day. And they went from a four lane undivided roadway to a three lane. So I think there's some opportunity to talk with folks maybe in, in Minnesota. And one of the uh, emphasis points to why they went to that road diet was it was the result of a pedestrian crash that resulted in a fatality. So that's kind of pushed that. Yeah. So it was shown in the video, and it's just kind of interesting because it was shown in the video, it's described in this case study, and I'll send this out to the group, where the crash occurred is you have basically four lanes, right, two lanes in each direction. The pedestrian was at a crosswalk waiting to cross. The car in the right lane slowed to allow and yield for that pedestrian to go. The car behind them was upset that they slowed to a stop, <laughs> went around them, hit the pedestrian, and killed them. About two weeks ago, I was going for a walk at lunch. The very same thing happened to me on Marvell. I didn't get hit and killed, obviously, but it was a near miss. I had to kind of step back. But that, those are the types of crashes that can result, that could result in that fatality. But it's that's what you're trying to avoid, right? Um, so I think it's just interesting that you have a road in Minnesota, a major city, that sees a significantly higher vehicle per day uh, over a similar segment. Their segment was 1.3 miles. The segment's about 0.94. So it's a relatively yes. similar segment of roadway. Can you remind us from where the starting and ending point? So it'd go from Lombardi to Carmel. I can't remember if it was here or So my recommendation would be let's get some more data so that I think you have a, a stronger case in point as to how that would work. We can sort of engage with our public safety folks and figure out what, what would that look like on game day then? Because that's 
in my opinion, that's what I suspect will be your largest hurdle is well, is I'm, what happens on those major event days. On game day, Brian, if you can correct me, um, they shut that road down like what two hours or three hours before the game starts. Is that correct? And when do they open it? Again, then? Uh, we open it post game. Uh, we have traffic going southbound. Just south because those are all in it. Correct. So, so you so. already are doing some kind of road changes by allowing just southbound traffic out of Holmgren down this way. From Mike McCarthy to Cormier, or where do you? Yeah, Mike McCarthy to Cormier, and then it opens up uh, both directions south of Cormier. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so you could yeah. theoretically still do that. You could, you could do that. It wouldn't matter. It would be the same Potentially, thing. Potentially, depending on what you had for, if we didn't have pedestrian islands, we could possibly set it up so that you use the southbound through lane and the um, left turn lane as two southbound lanes. You'd still have a northbound lane mm -hmm. open for emergency vehicles and at some point uh, other traffic. I mean, do you think just even talking with like our own internals and getting that together and showing that, like, I don't know what it costs to get an engineering company, but like, what even having that support or being able to say, because I agree, game day, like, I think I have an email to do that, but, but that was the first thing I thought was like, how is that going to impact the madness with that and drafts and all these other fun things the builders are doing, which, again, you don't want to change something for 10 days of the year, let's say, that, right. you know, the other 300 however many days, uh, <laughs> that we have to have people being able to cross safely and how many, again, we know this is a high area of people crossing with rockers and all that, um, but we're talking about, like, I would think even just our own public safety would be able to give a lot of good information and saying, this is how we grow it, this is how we do that, that we may not need to even engage well, another, yeah, I, I mean, like. I didn't realize that we were going just yeah. south um, from that. Yeah. I thought we had that's true, yeah, that's what I was saying. Argument. That right. changes a lot. That changes a lot, yeah. Because yeah. then you just dedicate that southbound traffic yeah. all the way. Because that was my thought was if you have three and all of a sudden you go from four down to, I'm like, you're cutting it in half for your traffic flow and, yeah. you know, leaving games are awful, but really, that's not going to. Yeah, I think we can certainly do that. We can talk internally and then bring back some comments and feedback. And we have traffic counters, don't we? Doesn't a friend see me as those who put those out every you know now and then? I guess I'm not familiar with those, but. Yeah, we also, I have an ask. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we would, basically, yeah. the engineer yep. would just yeah. have, like, back. So maybe she could even put, you know, fancy could get those up during some game days, and then we can get track accounts of those. I know they did have them a long while ago. Maybe she still does. I'm not sure. I, I know she's made reference to actually physically counting vehicles. Oh. Um, but not actually having, like, the traffic okay. tubes. Yeah. The county might have some, too. Right. The yeah. For the three lanes, do they always add the parking and the bicycle on the sides, or is it sometimes just the three? And so what were we thinking for here? Yeah, and, and what would work here is I think what Cole had recommended was two 11-foot or 12-foot travel lanes, a 14-foot center lane with a 5-foot bike lane. Mm -hmm. But you could do a combination of configurations, so it doesn't always have to be those three. You could have, let's say, in, in this Minnesota case study, it was a 12-foot turn lane, middle lane, two 11 foot travel lanes uh and then they had the, the bike lane but you could add a parking lane as well so if parking was a higher priority and not not the dedicated bike lane you could you could do that as well you just configure your lanes to be a certain way. the dot has a standard i think 12 foot is the minimum correct center turn lane that you could have you could theoretically go down to a 10 foot travel lane but that that's getting pretty tight too I feel like there's not enough parking, so that seems like it'd be appealing, but at the same time, without how much cross and all that, I feel like if you added parking down no. the street, all that would be a nightmare. So it's yeah. like you may be defeating some of the purposes yeah. you have with crossing right. because exactly. now you have park cars, and yeah. so you're still you still yeah. have two that's cars that you have to cross. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's well, why when we have all those parking spaces on like McCarthy, and now you can't use the drive back again. So when do you ever see a car parked on like McCarthy? Like never. You know, at least that eastern piece, it seems like there's not a lot of cars up there. So, but during Packer games, when you could use them, they're not available. So, not so I support this purposeful moving forward and collecting of data um, because I, I think we have the luxury of going through an entire Packer season and what ifing through the whole time. Secondly, I talked to zero business owners, but I bet I've talked to 50 people about this idea. 
and they all like the idea. Some because they would love to see the improved walkability and biking. Others just to make the road because it is four lanes, which promotes driving over the speed limit and difficult to get across when you were talking about the games. So I did not talk to a business owner, but I didn't encounter one single person who was like, that's crazy. So I don't think the business owners will close their business and move. Well, I think it's pretty easier for people to turn into love and yeah. I think that's one of the things they're concerned about is that, sorry, sorry, um, that their business is going to fail. And I think if we can get some more information on that, how it impacts it, and I think Appleton's business community was very involved in deciding on, on college, so and they had some major concerns going on. And you know, so reaching out to her, the, the person that's in charge of that, might get some good information from them, like why all of a sudden, you know, they, why they felt better about it or whatever. Um, so I think there's this is nothing unique to Ashwaubenon. No. This is everywhere. I mean, like they said in Iowa, you know, they're everywhere and they, they're proven. We got it from Madison Road down to 41. Right. Except mm -hmm. it's just two lanes on one side, two lanes on the other side, but you got the turn lane in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, it's nothing, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, mean it's nothing some, new. We have one on Willard. We have three lane configuration on Willard. They made that cell. Right. They used to be four, I think. That's three now. That's that's fine, it works fine, and people get through there, and it's not a big deal. So we have examples in our own community, and I'm sure there's others that I'm not thinking about. Um, so it's just, it's change, and there are some good questions and concerns that we need to work through, so. I think it's a lot easier to get into a business. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean. Yeah. So I think what we can do is maybe, uh, Ryan, we can talk internally about the day configurations, how that works, leading up to game time, post game time, what that looks like. I know there's been some comments and questions about large scale events at the Rush Expo or Rush uh, Center with concerts and things like that. Because traffic configurations are going to be different on those dates as well than on Packer game day. Just but but they still increase capacity uh, or volume, I should say, on the road. Um, so we can talk about that internally, bring that back um, to the committee, and then at some point, um, you know, I would recommend that the committee wants to the board to entertain this, that a recommendation to go to the board. But with that being said, I think you mentioned doing some public outreach then too. Right. So if the board is comfortable with the concept, let's go out, let's do some, some outreach, meet with the business community, let's yeah. provide some education and, and get their feedback. Right. Uh, I, I do suspect the board's going to want that as well. They're not going to want to just make this decision unilaterally. Yeah. Well, we already got, you guys, I think everyone got a copy of a letter from the gentleman completing you. Mm -hmm. and you know, he's not real excited about it, but I don't think he was totally like, this is the stupidest idea in the world. I think he wants, he's an open mind, wants to learn more. And I think the other business owners might feel the same way. At least it's worth it trying to get information right. out there and see where we go. And, and maybe that all, sorry, can go ahead. No, I'm going to try, but we're a little unique because not many places where you're going to change this road configuration do you have a professional stadium there. So it is a little unique unique in, in their defense, right? Mm -hmm. So like to find a comparable city that's doing that, you know, so maybe there is one out there. Yeah, we, we were doing some internal looking, so there's some streets in Madison around the campus area where they have a peak times, different traffic patterns, so it's a two-way street, it's a one-way street, or parking lanes are eliminated to, to make way for through lanes. Canal Street down by Pan uh, Field in Milwaukee is set up that way too, where you go from a two lane to a four lane road in one direction post game time just to get traffic out. So, it, yeah, it, it's definitely been done before. Um, the one question that I would have for public safety is you know, how that would look pre game because if you ever on the home runway prior to their closure of that section for Michael McCarthy with the party, all the cars that are coming in to park in those lots from Ed Newsy's Stadium View the Bar can get pretty pretty messy. So would we change that to say everybody's got to come in off of Lombardi, travel southbound through game two? Would that make it easier? I, I have no idea. I don't know if that would work or not. We're we not like the extent. Now we've been closing it two to three hours prior to right. game time. So we've been pretty, like, pretty aggressive with closing it down. We put the discretion on the part of our corner car that um, armed forces and uh, if they show up right away and they see it needs to be closed down, they'll pull the pin on it yeah. right away. Yeah, it works well. I've been out there pre-game and walked it with the chief, and it really works well. They shut it down, and the businesses now know 
They know when that's going to be shut down, so they seem to be all right with that and they're receptive to it and they know, you know, when you to get people in. Yeah, I think there so, was an early worry yes. about not filling their parking lots with yes. paid customers. And, and yeah, we had not been two days. points of friction we were able to overcome. One was filling the uh, parking lot back behind uh, West Van Doozies. Uh, the other one was uh, having a spot for ride share. And with the oh, uh, yeah. signage and the CSO at that intersection, we've been able to accommodate ride share uh, while still maintaining control of the traffic. Ride share and entrance of that parking lot behind end yeah. yeah. Nicely done. Yes. Yeah, it works. It works really well. Yeah, it seems to work well. I didn't come up with it. I just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Anything else on home right now? I, you know, do some research, see what you can find, ask questions. Um, it's a change and. You know, we just need to get the right information out there and really, you know, people understand just people understand it a little bit better. So like what we'll it is come back to it in a couple of months or what do you think? Yeah, what do you think? Uh, Maybe. Yeah, yeah, we can talk about it internally and bring it back okay. next month. Okay. All right. Okay, the items for next agenda. I know Sharon, you had one that you wanted to put on. The glass on mm -hmm. the recycling on the Okay. It's terrible. Okay. You can't walk your dog. By the recycling center. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I just thank, just, just, thank you, Brian. I don't know what they yeah, just it, when, as you see it, you know we will frequent it from time to time. But as you see, just let us know. It's technically the county's responsibility county's to maintain that. The, 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 the recycling center they do now have their own sweeper, whereas before they didn't. And we went out on our time and dime to to go take care of it. But if it's a problem. We'll keep harassing them, and then if need be, we'll go out and sweep it. So. I think this needs to go on the agenda, though. This has been going on forever. <laughs> it's terrible. terrible. And, it's, and it's always, well, he said, she said. And then the, the one year that was really good was right before the new landfill was going to be open. And the recycling center actually had a street sweeper there. And Dean, the, pro, the port director, said, I will sweep it three days a week. So if he went out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if it was worse, he'd go out another day. And you actually, there was like no glass. And that was like two years ago. It was great. And now it's back to where it was again. And they got a little sweeper, I think, is what Dean has now, just like a, almost a residential quality sweeper. So they're not out there anymore. Brown County Highway Department is not going to sweep it. Village of Ashwaubenon, it's not really their responsibility to sweep it. So why should they have to do it? But it seems like everyone, this has been going on forever, and something needs to change where this is taken care of because it's a constant thing. And even Randy Schultz got involved last time the Brown County. Um, one of our county supervisors to help get that sweeper out there, use it those years and have it taken care of. Um, but you're right, it's just, I had a I had text this weekend, which is funny. There was a group of cyclists going down there and they blew their tires. Yeah. And they're like, it's terrible. There's, I, there's, yeah. And I, you know, I try not to go there either. It's bad. My mom used to like, she, I don't remember how many bike there. She thought yeah. she rode her bike to work. She worked at the mill. Yep. Yeah. And they lived up there. And yeah. She would complain about that all the time. She's been retired 10 years, so that tells you yeah. how long yeah. this has been a problem. Now, yeah. is it the elected official? Or who is the county supervisor? I think Randy Schultz is, isn't he? Yeah, and he helped last time, and we did reach out to him. But I had asked Brian, I gave Brian a heads up um, a week or so ago, just because Sharon had mentioned it after our last meeting, and asking him to do some research, see what's out there, what we could do, get some ideas. But it's like it just never gets taken care of. It's a constant thing, and it's it's a problem. It's one of the only bike lanes going north south in the village of Ashwaubenon, and can, it's can, heavily used. We could put it on the agenda, um, and we can discuss it further. I suspect that our two options is to continue to strong arm the county or do it ourselves. You know, it's just a matter of our time and to do it. So there's really no there's two options. We can discuss that and then get a recommendation <clears> from the committee as to what we can do. Will they pay you back? Well, that's the thing. No. I think they should pay you. <laughs> they should. They should pay for it because it's ultimately the their responsibility. Yeah. They're supposed to mold, and they know what we do. This because we want them to look good. Yeah. I got a we can send them. We can send them a bill. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it next week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just to avoid. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Any other items for next year that we would have? Um, Homegrown coming back, right? Discuss. We'll have the sidewalks and the. Wish list and all that stuff. If you guys have time to get that together, that coming back too. Okay. All right. Anything else? Anybody from Packerland? Well, that'll be part of the whole. That'll be on the list. That'll be on the list. Um, do you think of anything else? So you want the you want the staff to put together the wish list for the committee? 
Well, you have it. Do what you. The well, I have the last top ten, which was a couple of years ago. So we can take a look at that again. Give us the whole list, and we'll, yeah. we'll talk about it internally. Yeah. Like and then please get that list out to everybody else again, if you like, Kelly. I will find mm -hmm. it. So I have that in my notes. Look. Okay. You bet. All right. If you anything else comes up, you want to bike in. I can add the um, plan. plan to both of you. Yeah. Karen, you don't have it either, but Pardon? the bike and pad plan, the okay. complete plan. Kim had asked for that. Oh, so I, you, could review. you don't have it. Either. I don't have it. Either. Okay. All right. Uh, next bike pad committee meeting is Monday, August 14th. Um, I would welcome a motion to adjourn and thank you, everybody, for. Can I make a motion? Leroy said that. I said, I'm just uh, I always say I, I, I always made it back. Thank you very much.